where is my unit leaking refrigerant? How do you find a leak in a air conditioner that's leaking refrigerant? Today I'm gonna to show you a unit that I'm working on. I'm about to start leak checking this equipment, see if I can find the leak, but I'm gonna to talk to you about the process that I use before I actually start diving into the equipment and why I do what I do. So, let me show you the gauges. So this equipment's 410A. I was out at this job, I think it was two weeks ago, and I added refrigerant, and now my pressure's 65. And I know for a fact that I've got only my low side gauge hooked up right now, by the way. But I know for a fact that my pressure was like 125, 135, and I had it fully charged. And now it's low again. And I gave the option to the customer right then and there, hey, have you ever added refrigerant? That's what I ask. And if they say no, then I say, well, would you like me to go ahead and do a leak check? And what I can do is I can go ahead and recover the refrigerant and put nitrogen in the system and then do a soap test. And I've also got an electronic uh, leak detector. So what I can do is I can run that over the inside, the outside, because this is a split unit, and then the line sets to see if I can find the leak. The customer declined and said, let's see how long it lasts. I said, that's perfectly fine. The bill was $146, I'm pretty sure. And now I'm back two weeks later. So since I have a very, very fast leak, and this outdoor unit is the high pressure side of the system that I know it's most likely in this condenser, okay? And the reason I say that is because it didn't take long for the equipment to leak down. Now, if it takes a long time, it takes a year for it to leak down a pound of refrigerant, then it could be in the indoor part, the evaporator. So in my experience, if it's a fast leak and it doesn't take very long for all the refrigerant to leak back out, it's usually in the high pressure side of the system. If it takes a long time for the refrigerant to leak back out and it's a slow leak, it's usually in the low pressure side of the system. But it depends on the size of the leak. So sometimes you have a large leak in the low pressure side of the system and it doesn't take very long for it to leak out. So that's the thought process with the experience that I've had. I know that, hey, depending on how long it took for that refrigerant to leak out will depend on where I look first and how I process of eliminate. So. Now I'm going to take this condenser apart, take a look at all of the copper and see if I can find any visual identifiers of, hey, this is me, this is where I'm leaking. So let's dive in, let's take a look at this equipment and find out if it's leaking first. I need to pull the disconnect. Don't forget to pull the disconnect. Oh, beautiful. All right. There's my line sets. Ooh, interesting. All right, let's take this apart. Hope you're ready to learn something about doing leak checks. If you haven't hit the like button, subscribe, or hit that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing, do that right now. If you need help, you need tech support, you need help with your project, you need my phone number, go check out my membership levels. Click the join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments, say I joined. I'll give you my email, and that's the first step to getting in contact with me. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. Okay, so I got the top off, I got the little corner panels off, and I'm looking at every piece of copper. And then another thing I'm doing is I'm taking and I'm putting my finger in the bottom of this pan, just like I do in the evaporator's pan. I'm always putting my finger down there and I'm rubbing just like this. Well, crap, I can't really reach, but. You know what I'm saying. I'm feeling for oil because I want to know, hey, if there's any oil in here, then I guarantee you this is probably where the leak is. And then I do the same exact thing for the evaporator uh, pan. I put my finger in there and I feel it in there. Sometimes there's some water in there because that's, you know, where the water drains. But uh, put your finger in there, see if you can feel any oil. Here is the indoor unit. This is an indoor air handler. It's, oh, wow. Look at there. We need to fix that. There's some burnt wires. So we need to put our finger in the bottom of the pan. See if we feel any oil. No oil. Take your leak detector. Run it over the U-bends of this copper coil. Just run it over the surface area. See if you pick up any uh, leaks. This is the refrigerant leak detector that I use. Impacon. I've had this for a long time. I'm actually in the market for a new leak detector. Let me know in the comments which leak detector you use and let me know what you recommend. I've had this one for a few years now and I'm looking for a new one. But you can definitely use these to find the leak. 
the leaking area, whether it's the indoor coil, outdoor coil, or those line sets. And if you don't detect anything, then that's where you want to go to your nitrogen. You want to go ahead and pump this equipment up with nitrogen. You'll need to recover the old refrigerant. And if you're going to pump the condenser and the air handler and the line sets, you'll definitely have to recover the refrigerant. If you're just going to pump the nitrogen into the indoor coil and the line sets, then you can just pump down your refrigerant into your outdoor unit. We've recovered all the refrigerant. There's only eight PSI left in there and we've got our nitrogen hooked up so we're ready to pump it full of nitrogen you gotta have some soap bubbles diversitec pro bubble this is what i'm going to use to spray the connections and try to find the leak so let me go ahead and put some nitrogen in here oh yeah and we want to put at least 350 psi on there i want to put 500 so let's do it. And hopefully we can find this leak. See the pressure we've got? We've got 300. If you want to increase the pressure, turn this in. Okay. And when you turn this in, it's going to raise the pressure. So turn this clockwise, okay? And then counterclockwise will decrease the amount of pressure. 400, yes! 500, all right. Okay, I'll go ahead and shut it off now. Beautiful. Go ahead and close these gauges. Got about 500 PSI on there. Now let's see if we can Hear anything outdoor, hear anything indoor. Get this to quit. I'm gonna go inside and check, see if I can hear anything. Oh, I thought this thing wasn't running earlier. It doesn't need to run with all those burnt wires. Oh, interesting. That's not good. All right, I'm gonna turn the breakers off. Oh, I hear something. You hear that? Oh, I hear it. Let's see if you can hear that. Oh yeah, I definitely hear that, definitely hear that. All right, I'm gonna spray some bubbles on here. The leak detector would come in really handy right now. The reason I'm not using it is because I'm just old schooling it in this video, but a leak detector, you know, anywhere in here, you know, because I can already hear it, but, and it wasn't a high pressure leak. This is uh, the low pressure side of the system in the cooling operation. So sometimes it's not always in the high pressure side of the system. You know, indoor coils, they start to leak around 15 years. So make sure you know that. All right. Keep in mind that this is a heat pump, so when you run this heat pump in the heating operation, your evaporator coil, your indoor coil, now becomes your condenser. So it does experience high pressure during the heating operation. And then this section, which is the outdoor unit, which is the condenser coil in the cooling operation, becomes the evaporator coil. So this would be a low pressure area during the heating operation, and the indoor would be the high pressure area. Well, I've took off some panels here so I can kind of see better, but I can't pinpoint the exact leak. And I want to know exactly where it's leaking, even though I'll probably get a price on the indoor coil for the homeowner. I want to find out where it's leaking. So I'm going to do a little trick here. Let me show you something. Had a teeny weeny water bottle in the truck. So I put some of my soap in there. And I'll see if I can't pinpoint this leak. I just pulled the blower motor out because I wanted to get a better look at the coil. <laughs> Look at that, three dead mice. Ooey, I'm finding all kinds of things as I dig deeper into this system. I took the bracket off of the front of the coil, that way I could slide the coil out. Got the blower out, now I can get in here and run my hand over the coil. Oh, oh. Heard a sound change. 
right here. Okay, so. Okay, so the leak is definitely over here somewhere. All right, now we're about to find it. All right, took the top piece off, the other side piece off. Look at that rust, ooh. I pulled the horizontal pan off of the coil just to give me more room. You got the vertical pan here and then you got the horizontal pan. Well, we have determined the coil is leaking. We can definitely hear it. And it's somewhere down on the bottom of the coil. So I'm going to get a price on a new coil and go ahead and get a price on a new air handler since this is a 410A a split system and we don't have to upgrade refrigerants. It's not like going from R22 to 410A. So I don't necessarily have to price them a new unit. I can just price them a coil. But I'll give them both prices and let them decide whether they want to do a new air handler or just a new coil. When should you fix the coil or fix the leak and when should you replace the coil? If you are not going to damage the coil and it's not going to hurt the efficiency and you're able to easily access the leak, pinpoint it and get it fixed. If it's copper, then you have a better chance of fixing that leak depending on where it's at than if it was aluminum. Also, if you have a coil that is less than 10 years old and it's leaking inside, then you should definitely take advantage of the warranty and go ahead and get a new coil for the customer. If it's out of warranty, then use your discretion. If it's aluminum, if it's not easy to access, if you can't really pinpoint it, if you have to tear the coil up, then you may want to go ahead and get a price on a new coil uh, to actually fix that leak for the homeowner. But if it's easy to access, you can get to it, you can fix it without damaging the coil, then always try to fix it. It's definitely gonna be cheaper for the customer and it's gonna be faster for you to get it done right there. Gave the customer the price on the evaporator coil for $2,000 installed, the price on the new air handler, $4,000 installed, and a price on a new whole system, heat pump, three and a half ton, for about $7,500 installed. And the customer's chosen to go with the evaporator coil, so I said, sounds great. Get a few more years out of that system with the new evaporator coil customer also want to see if they can overnight the part so sometimes you're gonna to have to call find out how much it is to overnight it and remember if it's at the end of the day then you might not get that coil tomorrow okay it may be another day so you need to specify with the customer and make sure you clearly communicate when the part will arrive because they want to know especially when they don't have air because I'm not gonna charge that system back up and put refrigerant in it when it's leaking out that fast and I don't think you should either uh, you don't want refrigerant coming through the vents, and you don't want to waste that money on refrigerant. And I just don't give that option to the customer. I'm not going to have that leaking coil charged back up. So I left the nitrogen in it. That way I got some nitrogen in there, and we're not soaking up the, you know, a bunch of air inside the line sets and the, the evaporator. We want to keep that nitrogen in there. That way we were, uh, have the least amount of non-condensables in the system as possible when I go to take and install that new coil. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.